the oiler, but rather applied and flows off of the oiler. So anyway, we apply that to the inside of the plate. between the arbor and that circlet. Failure to lubricate there and you'll find that as you're turning the alarm set arbor, it gets tighter and tighter until eventually it seizes. That oil will prevent that happening. Next we'll oil the great wheel. This is a great wheel on the time side. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, apply a drop of heavy oil between the arbor. I get the light right for you again. Between the arbor and the spring there. Turn the great wheel over, and I'm going to put a drop of heavy oil underneath the ratchet wheel. Now capillary, capillary attraction will draw that oil in between the ratchet wheel and the great wheel. So the arbor is the actual shaft? Yeah, the arbor is the shaft, if you like, yeah. yes. Yes, we don't have shafts in horology. No. We have arbors and we have staffs. So what would a staff be then, say? Well, unfortunately, there are arbors called staffs and staffs called arbors, so there isn't a rule you can follow strictly, but um, uh, mostly balances have staffs, pallets have a staff, most of the other wheels have arbors. I say most of them, that's not quite true either. Um, the great wheel has an arbor because something is fastened to it. So we call them, we, uh, where the, what you would call a shaft, has something fastened to it for some other function, like um, the barrel arbor has the main, a mainspring hooked onto it. So that uh, now becomes an arbor. Uh, sometimes the pallet shaft, if you like, uh, is referred to as an arbor. Now put a drop of oil on two or three teeth of the ratchet wheel so that as the clock is wound that oil will spread to all of the teeth and the click spring. So put the great wheel to one side and now do similarly with the alarm great wheel. So that is a drop of heavy oil between the arbor and the steel Just there. A drop of oil underneath the ratchet wheel so that capillary attraction will draw it in. And a drop of oil on two or three of the teeth. Once again, as you wind, that oil will spread to all of the teeth. Next, we're going to oil the center wheel. And here, you want to explore where there is friction. In fact, there is friction underneath the center wheel between this little washer here, there, and the head of the pinion underneath there. So put a little drop of heavy oil. That's where there was a washer that came off there. Wasn't yeah, there's another washer that goes on. In fact, if you look at the arbor, so again, you see here's a center wheel that um, has an arbor. I'm trying to get it right in the, from the point of view of the camera. It's, it's difficult to pick that up, but, um, with an eyeglass, if you look at the arbor, there is in fact a little pinch mark holding this washer down. Your second washer is to protect the plate from that pinch mark. 
This pinch mark is just um, a technique used in mass production to save manufacturing the arbor from a larger piece of steel. They just pinch the steel up rather than reduce the shoulder down and then put two washers on to protect the plate. Now on the opposite side, we'll notice that there's a washer just here between the top of the pinion and the spring. And as you turn the arbor, if you find the washer stays still and the spring moves, oil between the washer and the spring. If on the other hand you find that the washer turns, then oil between the washer and the pinion. It's wherever the friction is. Now also feed a little bit of oil between the coils of the spring so that capillary attraction will draw that oil down inside the centre of your pinion. So that's the centre wheel oil. And we are now ready to start descending the clock. So start off by cleaning the centre wheel washer and then pass the centre wheel washer over the end of the centre wheel arbor. Then replace the centre wheel in the plate. Place the third wheel, the fourth wheel, the escape wheel, and replace the pallets on the time side. Replace the great wheel arbor time side. Replace the alarm great wheel. Replace the alarm escape wheel. All of these pivots would have had their pivots previously checked. Replace the alarm pallet. But for the moment at least, leave out the alarm stop detent. That is spring loaded and we'll go back later. Now replace the top plate, locating first of all the alarm arbor, the, um, the alarm set arbor, uh, make sure that goes into its hole, and locating the two um, the two great wheel arbors and the centre wheel. That's where the winding keys and the setters fit. And now the plate starts to drop down over the four pillars. Now transfer your grip so that the thumb goes underneath and the fingers on top and now carefully with your tweezers manipulate each pivot into its hole and it's normal to start at the back of the clock and work your way forward. With a Smith's alarm it does seem to work if you start with the third wheel in fact and then progress on with fourth wheel, escape wheel and then parts. Yeah, okay, yeah. Who's calling it? Okay. Mr. Williams calling over IT. Are you busy for a moment? Right, that's all of the time side going. And uh, now just replace 
a couple of nuts at this end of the plate just to hold the, the plate on and make sure that the pivots don't come out again. Now turn the clock around and then manipulate the alarm escape within position. Still remember that it could be the pillars holding the plate up if the plate doesn't want to drop. Uh, make use of your eyeglass for this if, if you feel it's necessary. It was, in this instance, it was one of the pillars that was holding the train up. So now, manipulate the escape wheel into its hole, and the alarm parts. Now the plate should now drop all the way. At this stage, you could put on your alarm stop detent. Now make sure that This part of the detent here should go into that space there. Uh, and what you do is you pop the spring there behind this pillar and the top pivot into its hole. as I was doing that this corner of the plate lifted and the escape wheel and pallet came out of position so just run enough over that to prevent that from happening now put this behind the pillar put the top pivot into its hole lift this corner of the plate put the bottom pivot into its hole and this part of the alarm stop detent down through the hole in the plate there. Now make sure the plate is down onto the shoulder of the pillar. There's likely to be a step at the bottom of the pillar. Make sure the plate comes down all the way uh, over the pillar, or as far as it will anyway. And now tighten all four nuts. One, two, three, four. Next, you want to go through the whole clock, lifting each wheel in turn and making sure that they drop under their own weight. This is just checking that everything is free. The alarm escape wheel, alarm pallets. This, of course, won't because it's spring-loaded. Now turn the clock over and do exactly the same. So, great wheel, centre wheel, third wheel, fourth wheel, escape wheel and pallet. The alarm pallet and the alarm escape wheel. So they all lift and drop under their own weight. That's not proof at all as well, but there's evidence that everything is going to be free. Now before we progress any further, I would like you to progress that far. Next we're going to think about putting on the can pinion and it will be noted that at the moment hey, the Right, it will be noted that currently the centre wheel has any shape. It has up and down movement. 
and what we're going to do is drive the cannon pinion back on but at no time do we want the cannon pinion to touch the bottom plate. So what we're going to do is drive the cannon pinion on so it almost touches the bottom plate but uh, allowing for the end shake we're going, or to allow for the end shape, we're going to make sure that this bush here at the back of the centre wheel touches the inside of the back plate, leaving the cannon pinion a little bit uh, above the outside of the bottom plate, so that the cannon pinion will never ever touch the plate. Now to drive the cannon pinion on, support on a suitable block. Get a cannon pinion punch, so that's a flat punch with a suitable hole. Drop that on top of your pinion. <coughs> and then drive the cannon pinion down. Now check that the cannon pinion doesn't touch the plate even when the wheel is pushed down. Well, the cannon pinion doesn't touch the plate but there is scope for driving it down just a little bit further. So we'll pop it back on the block again. And tuck the cannon pinion down a little bit further. Check again. That's okay. And what I've just realised, I omitted to do. I remembered it before I put the cannon pinion on, but after I still forgot to do it and that is I should have oiled the centre wheel front pivot before I put the cannon pinion on. But um, if for any reason you do forget to oil it, as I've just done, uh, you'll probably find that if you put a drop of oil on the plate now and put the oiler in towards the centre wheel, capillary attraction will pull that oil into is where that it's actually required. That's heavy oil, yes. So I suggest you mark your drawing now with um, heavy oil for the centre wheel front pivot. Is that the time wheel? The brake wheel? No, that was the centre wheel. The cannon pinion fits onto the oh, centre wheel. wheel. Yeah. Well, it's just between the cannon pinion and the pivot. Yes. What, I've, uh, what I should have done is oiled in there before the cannon pinion went on. Yeah. But uh, because I forgot, I've oiled it now and capillary attraction has drawn the oil in. So there's the end shake and the cannon pinion is still free just clear of the plate. It mustn't touch the plate at all, no, no matter if it's correct. coming down. Correct. No. Now if you do drive the cannon pinion on a little bit too far so that it does touch the plate then it's possible to spring the cannon pinion back again and for that hold the clock and I'm holding it now and then strike the centre arbour with a hammer like so with a smart tap and that will spring the cannon pinion back up so that it could be tapped down again the second time but it's better of course to do it right the first time Next, we'll oil the clock. And we'll start off with the heavy grade of oil. And we're going to put a drop of heavy oil on the trim side of the For once, that might actually help, I think. 
put a drop of heavy oil on the great wheel top pivot, center wheel, alone great wheel. Now change over to, that was heavy oil, now change over to the medium grade of oil and do the third wheel top pivot, fourth wheel top, yes, escape wheel top, part top, that's all on the time side. Now the alarm escape wheel top, alarm part top, alarm stop detent top. Now turn the clock over and do similarly on the bottom fillets. So it's going to be the fourth wheel too is medium. Yeah. All the pivots, all the train wheel pivots in fact. Uh, if you missed any, don't worry, if you're going through again now on the bottom plate. So it's the on the bottom plate heavy. It's sorry, on the bottom plate great wheel it's heavy. Change it totally. The alarm is, um, that's both the alarm and the time side, great wheel bottom to its heading. We've already done the centre wheel bottom to it. Now change over to the medium grade of oil. And it's medium, bottom third, medium, bottom fourth, medium, bottom state. Medium, bottom part, medium, bottom alarm escape, medium, bottom alarm part, medium, bottom alarm stop descent. A bit the bottom bounce. No, we're going to leave that for a moment. Now let's just give you an idea of what we mean. Sorry, did we... you say the alarm stop detent? I did. You did. That was medium. That was medium. And let's show you what we mean when we're talking about oil. Well, you guess what you said. Thank you, um, David. What I'm going to draw for you first of all is a, is a fairly typical pivot. <laughs> and now the hole that it's going to work in. Avoid getting oil on the top of the plate here. Instead, apply the oil directly to that point there. Now, when you oil it, there may be a little bit of oil seen in the sink there. Certainly the oil will flow down the sides of the pivot there and a little bit across the shoulder there. If you lift the wheel up so that this shoulder contacts the plate, then you should see a little bit of oil squeezing out the sides there like that. That is an indication of good oiling.
That's the way I would have preferred to have drawn it, like so. Yeah. So if you lift the wheel up so that the shoulder contacts the plate, you should see a little bit of oil squeezing out of the sides there. One last place to oil is just, just here. If I can get the light right again. It's where the, there we are. Just there, where the alarm stop detent passes over the little tail on the hammer just so now we can think about putting the motion work on so put a drop of medium oil on the minute wheel post and replace the minute wheel. Replace the alarm release spring. Now Smiths have used two or three different styles of spring and at least two different styles of alarm release wheel. What you need to do is look at the alarm release spring and wheel, decide where the friction is between the two and duplicate that point. In this particular instance that will be found to be the top of the spring there, rubbing against the underneath side of the alarm release wheel, just there. The camera's having a bit of trouble with that. But never mind. So I'll put a drop of oil just there. Now I'll replace the alarm release wheel. And next we need to check the tension of this spring. So if you push the wheel down and let it spring up by virtue of the alarm release spring, you should find that the hole going through the alarm set arbor is almost completely obscured by the center part of the arbor. So if we turn this around, you might just about yeah, it's, it's difficult to see there, but it, um, no, it's, the, the light isn't really in a favourable position. Oh, there we are. You can just see over here 